The grounds of the Elliott School in Jamaica Plain will become an outdoor concert hall with a series of free performances. These will take place on Sunday afternoons up to September 26th. The series begins this Sunday, June 6th, with a performance by the jazz trio Men on Land, releasing its new album called Songs of Hope. We'd like to welcome members of the trio, pianist and composer Brian Friedland, who's also a curator for the series, along with Greg Wolfman on bass and Austin McMahon on drums. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Before we talk about the trio itself, I, I, I'm going to uh, go to Brian Friedland and ask about the concert series. Uh, this happened for the first time last year in the fall. What got this going exactly? So uh, I went to go hear a, a solo violin performance that was happening um, in May at the Elliott School. Uh, and I thought it was such a lovely um thing for the community to hear music and people were so happy to be there and out of their house and uh, connecting with each other that i thought i'd love to start a music series there and uh i approached the uh, executive director there um, about uh abigail norman about doing a concert series there and she thought it was a great idea so i um quickly put together um a five concert series that uh, ran through september and october um, with various musicians. So each concert was a different group and uh, each one was completely filled to capacity. Um, I, back then there were pretty strict um, uh, limitations on how many people could, uh, could attend because of COVID and every single one um, filled out and it was just really wonderful to connect with friends and people in the community and get to make music doing, doing what uh, us musicians love to do. And it was a special joy to play with uh, man, Greg and Austin, my bandmates here, for uh, one of those concerts. So we're um, really thrilled to be be doing it again this year. Well, what about uh, the chemistry of that concert? Because last year, I, I remember people were starved for in-person performances. I would see these guerrilla porch fest people now and then. You know, I mean, it must have been a special time for people to be able to do something like this. Absolutely. Yeah, it was uh, really meaningful to get to uh, um, be the catalyst um, for that and see people come together. And um, it was it was really uh, a special event. So um, it's amazing to me that now this year, so we did that for free last year to raise money for the Elliott School. And Greg and Austin and I did a, a fundraiser for the Innocence Project as well. Um, and uh, it was it was wonderful to help the Elliott School stay open and uh, have all everyone come together to enjoy music and, and support um, an amazing institution that's uh, been, been around for, I believe, since 1675. Um, so the, uh, amazingly, uh, this year now we have sponsorship, um, wonderful sponsors. Uh, one of uh, them came to one of the concerts last year, Sazama Real Estate, and uh, said, I'd love to sponsor a series for next year. Um, how, do, how do we make that happen? So here we are, I'm uh, playing in five concerts that I also curated, and there's two other curators, um, the record company and Hoopla Productions, which is the organization behind JP Porchfest, and there's 15 concerts, all styles of music, and uh, it's gonna be an amazing, amazing series, I think. It's gonna run for all the way from um, this Sunday with Man on Land here, all the way to the uh, end of September. Austin, uh, Man on Land goes back in time a bit as well. Tell me how you got started. Right. Well, I believe it was Greg who put the three of us together for a gig at the now non-existent Riles Jazz Club in Inman Square um, a little more than 10 years ago. And um, I think Greg just said, hey, you guys want to play? And we just put together some original music and we got up there and did a couple rehearsals and played and it just kind of clicked and we all felt like, I think we should keep doing this. This is a special chemistry. And and I, for one, am a big fan of bands, of sort of not just like being a freelance jazz musician. I think that's great, too, and I do a lot of that, and we all do on the side. But um, being a member of a band where we're writing music specifically for one another's voices and kind of conceptualizing together and rehearsing regularly feels really special to me and it's it's somewhat rare in the jazz world and so you know we've been doing this and at first it was kind of few and far between maybe it was just two or three concerts a year and then i think in the last maybe three years or so we've gotten a little more productive we recorded our first album which is also called man on land and released that just a couple of years ago 
And we have a backlog of dozens of other compositions that haven't yet been recorded. And now, of course, we're releasing this album, Songs of Hope, which I believe tomorrow, June 4th, is the official release date. Um, and so, you know, we're really excited to be creating music together that feels genuine to ourselves. And it involves all of our influences from other facets of our careers and jazz and, and other collaborators or, or collaborations we have with other jazz musicians, but it, it's, it's got its own identity and its own sound um, that we're all really proud of and very excited to share with, with the community. Tell me about uh, the album, Austin, because uh, this isn't just a, a playlist. Uh, there's something that's very uh, integrated about this. And, and I think there's a sort of at least a parallel to the poem by Amanda Gorman that was read at the inauguration of President Biden. Absolutely. And yeah, I think the idea behind it is that how it really started was Brian um, during the pandemic, Brian had written a couple of new tunes and he said, well, let's find a way to play these together. And I think the first, uh, the first opportunity we had was, I think it was a series through the Brookline Music School. Is that correct, Brian? Um, where we had the opportunity to basically do kind of like a remote concert. So we basically, we recorded our own individual tracks in our own homes and pieced them together in a video and connected the audio so that we could have basically two new songs recorded. Um, and we presented that as part of a concert series. I don't remember when that was exactly. It was early on in the pandemic, but um, that sort of spurred the idea of, hey, what if we expand upon this and create more songs of hope? Like we were trying to get a hopeful message out there because we were all struggling as musicians. We were all struggling, struggling with, all the political upheaval that was happening at the time and the social injustices that we were seeing. So we felt like, you know, let's, let's expand upon this. So we actually recorded this as we wanted it to have a narrative. We didn't want it to just be a collection of songs, right? So we recorded it in the winter months. Um, and then at, at the inauguration, when we heard Amanda Gorman's poem, we were all incredibly moved and felt like we had to find a way to incorporate the titles or the sentiment of her poem into the titles of our pieces. So at first it was songs of hope one songs of hope two, Greg's song also of hope, you know, things like that. And we were just kind of, it was going to be something of hope, but we didn't know what kind of message we wanted to tie in. So her poem from the inauguration became like the perfect narrative to kind of give an arc to the songs of hope suite. Um, and then we added a couple of bonus, um, uplifting bonus tracks as well to the album. There's two other tracks that are not part of the Songs of Hope suite, um, which we also feel great about. And we're happy to kind of share that as a little like extra bonus for our listeners to enjoy. Uh, Turning to Greg Lofman, uh, there's also a, another purpose involved here. You're raising funds. Uh, tell me about the objective there. Yeah, so kind of like what Austin was saying uh, during this pandemic, you know, we all not only had the pandemic and all the 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 kind of the, that to deal with, but there was also all the social unrest and upheaval, and it was tough to like to kind of be in the pandemic and to to see that going on at the same time. And so we, you know, we're kind of like, you know, we we didn't have any work because we're all musicians, so we were all dealing with being out of work and the pandemic and watching you know basically our country on fire in, in so many ways and thinking like what can we do about this we're musicians we just want to make music for people um but it really it kind of like struck us that music is what what is needed from music is to uplift us and to bring us together and like to give us hope so that's kind of what brian was started with with writing what became songs of hope and then we all kind of like worked with that together and we thought, well, what, what else can we do besides just release the music and talk about hope? And so um, we were able to keep the, the cost of the recordings like fairly low. So we figured why not um, just donate half of all the proceeds from the sales of this album to the George Floyd Foundation because his tragic murder was such a, a, a pivotal moment for all of us in, in the United States. But uh, especially during we were writing this music at that time, so kind of like trying to take some of the of the the you know the, the bad feelings that we were having and the, and the struggles that we were going through and try to like lift it and kind of like use that energy to to build a better uh, better society for all of us in our in our own small way as much as we can 
Austin, what about uh, the space where you're going to be playing at the L? Because you've been playing inside clubs a lot of the time, which you, where you would normally expect to hear jazz. But mm -hmm. I, I've been to some nice outdoor places. What's it like at, at, in the schoolyard? It's it's beautiful. It's a really nice grounds, and there's kind of where the musicians set up is kind of under the cover of a nice big tree, if I remember correctly. <laughs> And um, and then there's a, a long open lawn where people can kind of space out. I know that'll be a little bit different this year because um, there's going to be less restrictions on how far people have to space out. And, you know, it's just like people bring their lawn chairs and they get to see us kind of in the corner of the schoolyard. And it's it's a beautiful setting. It's it's essentially in the middle of a nice neighborhood in Jamaica Plain, too. So it's uh, it's there's people walking their dogs down the side streets and kind of and kids riding scooters and bikes around and they just kind of stop and they'll watch us for a minute and then move on. But um, it sounds like we have about 134 um, presale tickets already already accounted for, um, which is very exciting that we're going to have a nice large audience because it's been hard, um, you know, to gather for a long time now. One more question for Greg, if people want to get the album, what's the best way to look that up? Uh, you can go to our website. It's manonlandmusic, all one word, dot com. Uh, and from there, you can buy the album through PayPal. There will be a link to uh, a, a website called Bandcamp that allows you to buy the, the album and, and also stream it kind of as a preview. And you'll also be able to like see a video that we produced that kind of like describes our our you know our thinking behind this album see like you know where where we're going to be playing next I don't, I don't know if we have anything on the books yet you know gigs are still starting to kind of like just trickle back in but it's you know that's that's kind of like the one-stop shopping for man on land is manonlandmusic.com and finally brian if people want to go what's the best way for them to do what needs to be done to make sure they have a spot uh so there there's no charge for for attending um but they need to pre-register um, which uh, if they go to the Elliott um, School website, um, there will be a link there to the uh, Eventbrite page where they can reserve tickets for this concert or any of the following um, uh, 14. All right. Well, thank you all very much for taking the time to join us. It was our pleasure. Yes, thank Thanks you. for having us. It was uh, Brian Freeland, Austin McMahon, and Greg Lofman from Man on Land. We'll have more news in just a moment.